Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. There are still some physically people. I don't know if they were volunteers or indicated. No volunteers. No volunteers. Really motivated. Okay. Thanks uh, for joining this session in the uh, most technical week of the year, which is the AI week. Um, but I will handle a non-technical issue. But for me, the most important issue, which is the human uh, aspect and how can we find the right skills and how can we find the right talent? Uh, let me present myself. I'm Saskia van Uffelen. I'm having heading different uh, caskets, like they say in French. One hand, uh, I'm uh, uh, working for Agoria, which is the Federation of the Tech se Sector in Belgium. 2,200 uh, members, which is uh, most of the IT, the telecom, uh, and still the manufacturing industry also, because the Federation started as being the one responsible in 1800 for everything which was um, linked with, uh, which is now called technology. At the other hand, I'm representing Belgium for the European Commission, um, started in 2010, 2011 with the first commissioner, Nelly Cruz, a fantastic lady who wanted really to change something in the world. Um, as a digital champion and now focusing more on the skilling, upskilling, reskilling, how can we create right talent in Belgium as the national coalition lead for digital skills and jobs. And now we will have to get him awake. So why is that important for me, um, knowing that everything which I do for the National Coalition is on top of all my responsibilities? I've always been an executive in the tech sector, local, international, horizontal, vertical, but I think everybody should also give something back to the society. And let's just take this as my social responsibility, because I want to be reassured that we create a connected world, a digital world, where everybody is involved, from the youngsters to the older, from the ladies to the men from uh, the people who are having competences in one domain or another domain. It is very important that we do it in an e-inclusive way. Now, if we, if we talk about technology, let's just give a little bit my view on technology in context of the session today. You could imagine that I would give the presentation like this. Some people would say that I do not treat them with respect. Uh, I've seen this happening like on the picture with the King of Belgium, who could have dared years ago to turn the back to the most important person of the room. Now, this is what digital transformation is about. It has nothing to do with technology as such. It has to do with a change in society. And that's why we have a challenge or an opportunity. And I'm an optimist, so I always talk about opportunities. We have an opportunity to adapt to that changing world. And the ones, and that's why they say, the ones who are the most flexible, the ones who are the most agile will be the ones who will be uh, surviving for the future. The reality is that everything and everybody is already connected. So we still have some people doubting about it. Can we, can we, can we stop it? Uh, um, can we do uh, anything we can in order to avoid it? It is not avoidable. And let's see the positive side of the COVID period. Um, I've written in my last book, uh, which was edited in 2020. Um, let's hope we do not need a war to realize that we need to think to do things in a different way. Now, I hope, or I will not read, write any books anymore, um, but I hope this was not um, the reason for, but it, we were still having connectivity. We were still having our roads. We were still having our buildings and we still had technology to help us to continue. So, the fact that everything and everybody is connected is a reality and it has a huge impact on the way we see the society, but also the way we see businesses. Before, when I was young, years ago, I decided what my customer would buy. The government decided what the citizen needed to do. The teachers decided what the students need to do. And now the world is upside down. And that creates a discomfort for a lot of people. Because people are connected, so they are outspoken based on fake news or real news, but they are outspoken. They think they are a better teacher than the teacher themselves. They think they're a better politician as a politician themselves. And it is the, the organization who needs to adapt to the requirements 
of the citizen, of the customer, of the students. And that is a major change in competences. And that's why people who were very successful in the past, in the different domains, in the academic world, in the, in the government, in the business world, are not necessarily having the right competences to manage their organizations today. Because yesterday they were in a comfort zone. I will take business as an example. If you had years of experience, then you could go a level up and then you get a team and then you could go a level up and you get a bigger team. And finally, the only thing you are very capable of doing is checking PowerPoints and spreadsheets. Now the world is upside down. Now you have to inspire people who are not necessarily physically sitting in the room because there is something as hybrid working and you cannot force everybody to come to the office. So this change has nothing necessarily to do with technology. It has to do with a change of the society. And that's why we need to adapt. For Belgium, one of the elements which is very difficult is that the competition is not coming out of the sector. And that requires also, we are also in the industry, we are hiring people with a, a, based on a proof of, of, of studies and experience in the sector. And the more sector knowledge you have, the better you are to go in that sector. That's not valid anymore. Because as the competition is not coming out of the sector, we need to hire people with other sector com uh, competitions and knowledge and experience. But again, on hiring, this is a major change. If you do not do that, you will be working in a silo and you will be overrun very fast by somebody you didn't see coming. And you can continue that way. I know this week there is a lot discussed about technology and a lot about data and AI and most likely chat GPT and how dangerous it can be. I still remember that we had the same kind of reactions when I talked about the first self-driving cars, by the way. But there is a very important aspect that we as Europeans may not forget when we talk about data. The data for China is very easy. It's data for the government. It's clear. It's easy. You don't discuss. Data for the US is data for profit. And that's why we see a lot of US, big US companies, handling a good set of data. But the end goal of that is making profit. There's nothing wrong about it. You just need to realize it. And sometimes I have to tell that banana, uh, Amazon is not a retailer of banana only. And Europe has a vision of having data for the Europeans, which for me is in line with my values. But how can we talk about data for the Europeans if we even do not speak the same language? And now everybody can complain that Europe is making too many policies and too many reforms and too many acts. The only goal that we need to have very fast is we need to align and that we speak one data language. And it's only on that moment that we really can force a business model, an economic value model, which is in line with the vision of data for the Europeans. Now, one aspect which for me is dear to my heart is, is, is ethics. Um, I have given a, a session on, on cyber and, and, and data and cyber and those. And then we talk about training and we talk about uh, very experts and we talk about data and DSOs and whatever. Let's not forget that the ethical behavior of data and the management of data is the responsibility of each and each individual. If I see sometimes how adults, and we were talking about uh, a social media platform um, where everybody is crunching on each other, um, and then a few weeks later, I, I, I read that teeners are doing a suicide because they're bullish on social media. Yeah, then you can argue, is that the fault of the social media, the technology? Is that the fault of the children? Or is that the fault of the adults? Not necessarily giving the right role model towards the children. So we cannot delegate ethical behavior to a process or to a policy. It should be part of our culture as well in private life as in professional life. And there we still have a step to do. Now, my vision is um, in 2040, me as a citizen, I would like to have one invoice a month. And that invoice should take my travel, my mobile data, my health insurance, the education of my five kids, you name it, my energy. So dear sectors, between now and 2040, you better get together 
to give me as a citizen what I would like to have. If we don't do it, and we don't do it very fast, don't be surprised that in 2040, I will tell you there were big Euro US companies going for profits who are now handling the applications using the data in a more value add way and in line, remember, it's the world upside down and in line with what the citizen wants. So we have now an opportunity to really invest in that one. But that obviously requires a completely different set of talent. Now, for the ones who have uh, followed um, Jeroen this morning, Jeroen France, and I will comment a little bit on the reality in Belgium. I didn't check if I have sound, so I will skip this one. Um, but uh, uh, I will come back on it uh, a little bit later. What Jeroen is, Jeroen is representing um, Agoria. We have done with Agoria the Be the Change study uh, because I was in 2018 asking for uh, not the numbers of Silicon Valley or Singapore. I would like to know how is the employment market in Belgium evolving? And we all know that Flanders is a little bit different than Wallonia and Brussels and that the sector A is not equal to sector B. Just to give you some numbers, uh, um, and these are not necessarily the last, the next one, next update will come in uh, beginning of May. We have more than now 700,000 open vacancies in Belgium. So people are still arguing if skilling, reskilling, and upskilling should be high on the agenda. And I can tell you, people are still arguing if it should be high on the agenda. So it's my social responsibility to repeat it, we have 700,000 more open vacancies. Open vacancies because we need a different set of competitions, of, uh, of, of competences. And the industry is still not adapting to it. I've seen a vacancy asking for somebody with uh, 30, uh, 37 years of AI experience. Now it goes very fast. And or I have some problems here above, but I don't think it existed. Worse, the vacancy was saying should at least have 10 years of a concrete project using AI. And then preferable a woman younger than 26. So we have somewhere a lack of reality in the way we want to fill in those vacancies. Those profiles you will not be capable of finding. So in finding the right talent, the first experience I want to share, let's stop trying to look for an elephant who is pink, weighs 200 grams, can sing, but still look as like an elephant. You will not find it. You will need to see what are the competences that I need to do my project. And maybe I will find a spot of competences in person A, a second set of competences in person B, a third one in person C, and for that project, I have to bring those three people together. And the set of competences for another project will be different. We will not find the ideal um, uh, elephant. Worse, the 80% employment rate, which is, a, which is essential, it's not something the government found out. If we really want to get our pensions paid and the social security continued, we need the 80%. We are almost there in Flanders, we are far away in some other regions uh, in, in Belgium. But even there, we have never worked with that many people in the history of Belgium. So activating people, it's gonna focus on a very small set of people where some of them, they do not want to work. Some of them are frustrated because after working 40 years, they're just, got a letter and in some cases a mail saying we thank you for your services and they fall back in the social security and there is still a last part which we really can activate but it's not with that small part we will solve a solution it's not with the part with the students i've got five kids but we did something wrong at a certain moment in time because we have less students and the students who are following the regular education we still do not have the right curriculum we still do not have the right teachers. We still do not have the right students getting the right degrees between now and 2030, 35. Nothing will change on the outcome of the regular education. So I will do a lot of presentation for the rest of the, of the, of the slides on the non-regular education. If we do not activate all solutions to get people trained 
But certainly the people who are working today, we need to skill them, we need to reskill them, we need to upskill them, because that's the only way of finding an answer to our request of closing vacancies. There are some aspects which we also should take into account. When I started my career, um, and I'm, I'm not necessarily an example of doing studies in a certain way and then making your career, because normally I should be in front of a classroom or give physical education. But I started in technology, painting the showroom and then sharing coffee. And then most likely I did something good because I ended up at uh, different levels. But the diploma now is not an essential element to join the employment market. It was, it was the key to the employment market. And we're still recruiting masters with 37 years of, ex of AI experience. No, we should look for people with, which have a good sense of, of, of common sense, which have passion, which have energy, which can work in, 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 in cross silos, can bring different experiences together in order to be creative and innovative. That's also the kind of competences we need. So people with a lot of senior experience maybe can bring that part to the, to the party. The bad news is that for the students, which I see regularly, I always have to congratulate them and then say, now I have got very bad news. It will not be over. But we do not have a culture of skilling, reskilling, and upskilling. In the best, 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 best organization, we reach 7% of the employees. So we still have to work on the fact that skilling and upskilling and reskilling is the responsibility of everybody. I'm CEO of my own life. I have to take my life in my hands. I have to take the initiative that I understand the basics of AI. I have to take the initiatives that I understand what chat GPT is so I can at least analyze if what I read is fake news or is valid based. That is a responsibility also of the individual um, uh, uh, going forward. And the last point is every job will change. There is no job that will not change anymore. And I will take you an example. I'm working for a federation. We have a lot of experts. And I always, I always said, watch out eh, until, but it was before ChatGPT, until something like that will come and they will not need you. Now you, you have to realize the role of an expert is they are regrouping data for 70% of their time, 80% of their time. And they are thinking about what they have regrouped for 20% of their time. Now that will be turned around. They will only need to spend 20% of their time. They need to be capable of asking the right questions to the applications. And that's the whole fuss which is going on today, Elon Musk, et cetera, et cetera. It, they are not right, they're not wrong, you can't stop it. But we need to learn the people who can ask the right questions to those platforms will be the people who are doing the best marketing managers. Marketing role and making a competitive, competitive analysis before you gave that to big four with a lot of PowerPoints and it took three, six months. Now you can do it in 20 minutes if you can ask the right questions. So the time of those experts will not be anymore in finding the data, but now they have to think for 80% of their time. They have to bring value adds and asking the right questions, for example, could be a value add uh, going forward. Now, Europe has understand that skilling is an important aspect. Um, so that's why 2023 is the year of skills. It's not only digital skills. And let me just, just a, a small point on that one. Hydrogen is a technology. So tomorrow I can talk about green skills. So let's talk about future skills. Because the fact that we always have to adapt to a changing environment will be a reality for the future. It will not change. So that's why the year of skills is an important one. And at least it helps us to put it on the priority list of a lot of, a lot of other aspects. Every member state normally has a national coalition for digital skills and jobs. Started out of the past, but uh, the, the, the way they are handling them depends a little bit on the government. Some are governmental institutions, which gives what you have with governments. You sometimes have an election and then people come and people go. 
and then they pay a big company to do an analysis on what should be the priorities and they all start really over again. In Belgium, I do not have a political mandate, so the elections can take place, um, but I still got my letter for 2023 asking me to continue. So um, for Belgium, the coalition is already uh, working since 2011 on the same uh, priorities. Um, first, without anybody focusing on it, then I had um, uh, the, now I, for the first time a minister responsible for digital agenda, which was Alexander de Croo, and now we have a secretary of state, uh, Mathieu Michel. So we have the national coalitions and the first idea we set uh, when Nelly was focusing on it is we cannot wait until the transition of the regular education happens. We need to focus on non-regular education. Some of you will know initiatives like BICO, the Molen Geek, Campus 19, um, but you can also have people helping from a CPIS to get uh, It's Me installed uh, during COVID. You can have people focusing on coding in schools. You can have the coder dojos. You can have people focusing on the STEM platform. So at a certain moment, I had a lot of initiatives, but nobody knew about. So I went to Europe and said, maybe we should create a house. In the house is different rooms. Each room is, is an initiative. In preparing at a certain moment, we can go to Cornel from Londersdale saying, now I would like to know something more about AI. What is organized? Where can I enroll myself, free or not free? And uh, how can I train myself? And that's how the European platform for digital skills and jobs has created. All those platforms, are connected with the European platform. So all initiatives have the possibility, if uh, an organization says, I would like to share my initiative with the platform on, the, on, the, on Europe, it's possible. We also have initiatives which are organized in Europe, which can be valid for Belgium, and we also share them. So everything is connected. Huh? Europe is not simpler than Belgium. And by the way, you have DG Connect and DG Education and DG Transport and DG Research, and they do exactly what we do here. They do it all in a silo. I had a discussion with DG Education recently. Shouldn't we create a platform in the year of skills, regrouping all initiatives? I said, maybe you should look to your neighbor because they have already created it uh, two, three years ago. Um, it is focused on, on, on different aspects. It can also regroup all initiatives about funding linked to skills and skilling on a European level. It's not an easy way, I know it, but they try to regroup it. So if you are looking to have access to European funding for your initiative to stimulate skilling, upskilling and reskilling, um, do not hesitate to go to, to that part. Um, the local aspect which is existing is a little bit an ecosystem. And the ecosystem is focusing on different aspects um, of um, the, the challenge. The first aspect is, for those who know the, um, the study we've done with the uh, uh, King Baudouin Foundation, 46 of the Belgians working between 16 and 64 have a risk to be excluded from that connected world. 46, it's one on two. Working have a risk to be excluded because of maybe not having the right infrastructure, maybe not having the right financial means to have the connectivity, or maybe not having the right skills. And it's on the last part that we started um, last year with the support of uh, Proximus and BNP Paribas Fortis and uh, the cabinet of uh, Peter and Sutter, Digital. And Digital is really focusing on regrouping all the initiatives who have a focus on e-inclusivity. Again, we are not starting new initiatives. We are just regrouping the existing initiatives in order to, to be capable of scaling them. Because there is a huge challenge with the financial funding that we get for skilling, reskilling, and upskilling. It's based on three aspects. First aspect is you need to make an analysis to prove that there is a problem, as if we do not already know that we have a problem. Then you have to make something new, as if we do not have enough initiatives already, and then the initiative dies in silence because there is no funding anymore. And so what happens? We go back to phase one. We ask for funding, we make a study, we create something new and it dies in silence. And for all those who can have impact on the creation of funding, please think about the two-step approach. First should be scale existing initiatives. 
We have great initiative in Flanders, which we can reuse in Wallonia or the other way around. We have great initiatives on all level of skilling. It can be for inclusivity as well for the hired expert in, in AI. And the second part of the funding should, be, should, be, should go to awareness creation to the citizen. If we do not speak to the individual, take the initiative yourself, then we will not progress on, on the results. So that's the first uh, initiative. Second initiative is there are a lot of assessment tools. How digital am I? And where do I need to develop? One of the uh, initiatives was the digital skills passport, which is measuring 27 competences, not only technology, there are also human aspects which are, which are measured. We make an assessment and if, for example, uh, we use the data and be the change, if I'm a sales manager, I will compare it with the competences you need today, but you can also compare it with the competences you will need in that role in 2030 because every job is changing. And indicating what are then the domains that I need to develop myself if I still want to be relevant in 2030. And for those, we link them with training which are available in the ecosystem. And then we have a full circle for the individual. You can make your assessment, you can monitor it towards the future, and you can link with initiatives which are available in the ecosystem. There was an initiative specifically for the um, people working in the government, which is called Connect2. But I've realized and motivated the state security, even people working in the government are people. So maybe we can reuse it for every citizen. So now connect to is open uh, for everybody. And then there is a last ecosystem which is focusing on women in digital. Why? Remember the 80%? We only have 66% women active in Belgium. And the number is going the wrong way. Why? Because most of those roles will be automated over time. So those people will become available. So there are a high potential to skill and reskill to every aspect we need in the employment market. Um, this project is for the moment coordinated for years now by FOT Economy. Um, you can find it on Be Digital Together. Before it was the national strategy for women in digital um, uh, it was the good news is the only national strategy we have in the domain of skilling, uh, but we had some troubles on diversity X, Y, and so we've rebranded it to be digital together. But the objectives remain very valid and the ecosystem is uh, also around. So we have a full circle um, uh, of ecosystem in, in, in Belgium. Now, just a, a word on the, on the Belgian platform, DigiSkills Belgium. It is created by support of um, the European uh, Commission. So they have financed the development of the platform. Um, we have applied in 2019, just before COVID. Um, we needed to have the agreement of the whole of the government. Now, the government in Belgium is not that simple. Uh, so this is the only thing regrouping on a national level. Because the, the statement we are talk about talent and competences, I always get is, yeah, but Saskia, this is a regional responsibility. And it is true for the regular education. For, for the non-regular education, it's the responsibility of nobody. So everybody can take it. And that's why I do not want to go beyond having a national overview. My, I'm living in Vlaams Brabant. My husband is from Charleroi. So yes, sorry, my, my, my kids speak two languages. So why should I then say you have to follow training in Flanders if they maybe have an offer in Brussels available? Um, they needed to have, we needed to have the support of different federations. Um, Agoria was the one who has answered uh, the, the, the call for tender, but it's also VBO, Federgon, and it now has been extended to a lot of other federations. We had to have the support of what we call Les Fonds de Carrière, the, the training center in Belgium, uh, which normally should also be a part of the solution. Normally the Fonds de Carrière should be the ones helping the industry in solving the problem of skilling, reskilling, and upskilling. We may not forget that that is normally their core business. So whatever we need to do as a complement means that also there, there is still uh, room for improvement. 
And then we had the support of uh, a lot of different governmental institutions uh, afterwards. So quickly run through um, uh, the, the, the platform. It's a living, it's a living platform. Um, the goal is, like I said, everything is linked with the European platform, shared local initiatives with international, international initiatives from some member states with Belgium, just to give access and to avoid that we are creating doubles uh, in the organization. Um, it should be the one-stop place for everything that people wants to know what is existing about skilling, reskilling, and upskilling. And it can go from an employer who says, I would like to do something about the 46% in my organization, or it can go for an employee, or it can go for a mother who says, I would like to have something for my kids, or it can be for a teacher, or it can be for somebody who says, I need to make the memorandum for the next elections. Um, it is one stop, but I'm not creating something new. I'm pretty lazy all my life, so I would like continued continue this competence. I just connect the dots. So the only thing for those who know technology, it's very easy. I collect some data, I put a filter on it, and depending on the requests, the people get access to their websites. This avoid a lot of doubles in uh, all system, but it has also an aspect of uh, creating, sharing news. What is happening? Um, uh, good news, I try to be an optimistic. Um, there is a small element of facts control um, at the beginning uh, of, the, of the, the, the participation with the partners on the platform. But there are some partners which are pretty professional, so we know that we can give them access themselves to update the platform. So there again, the platform is automatically updated by the partners themselves. So the quality of having a full coverage of what is available national to create really an impact on the current demand of the employment market is under control of the ecosystem themselves. There is a lot of requests on uh, sharing experiences. Um, uh, it can be one-time events. Uh, it can be trainings, which take one day, one week, seven months. They can be free of charge. They can be the basic, basic, basic level until quantum. There are less trainings on quantum on local initiatives, but it was one of the technologies that I had to um, uh, add to the platform uh, requested by the, by the European Commission. And then it happens if you, if you search in the left, I would like to have a training on AI, uh, what is available, and then I click through, through the website showing the initiative and I leave it to the person who has done the selection to connect with the initiative. If the initiative is not valid anymore, then it goes out if it is one day initiative. Uh, so we try not to share old uh, information uh, with the partners. There was one uh, um, request. I thought, okay, let's, let's use the time to complete, to fill the house uh, and to have uh, something which is representative for each region, Flanders, Brussels, Wallonia. And then we will go and sensibilize the end user, the citizen, the student, the organization. There was one request as a priority, priority from the partners, which can be partners who are delivering content to the platform as partners who are helping on the sensibilization. We first would like to get into contact with each other, which for me was good news because it means that they were all asking individually, how can we scale by supporting and by getting connected with each other. So um, the upgrade we are doing now is, is including um, the connection with Europe, is including the partner platform. So you get, if you are in the partner zone, you get the name, the email, the phone number of somebody you can contact if you would like to have more information about a certain initiative. And then again, I leave it to the ecosystem to get together and to uh, inspire you uh, by other initiatives in order to boost the scalability. And then the last upgrade we are doing now is bringing a, a regional uh, step into the platform. And the reason is very simple. I had a request from uh, Wallop. Uh, we have an uh, initiative in Europe is called the European Digital Innovation Hubs, if you have heard about it. We have hubs all 
around the country. Um, Wallop is what is doing, eh? it's Wallonia Hub. Um, and they, wa they wanted to use the platform to avoid that they had to create a platform for Wallonia, yes. And um, also helping to get the full visibility of what is available in Wallonia on the platform. But that also, they should also, they needed to report to Europe only the Wallonian part. So that's why now there is a regional uh, selection that is added uh, these days to the platform. Um, firstly, because then we can avoid that Digital Vlaanderen is making their own platform and uh, Brussels um, uh, paradigm is making it for Brussels. And then we have a new government and we start all over again. Um, but at the other hand, also, like me, I'm living in Vlaams Brabant, but I would like to know what is happening in Brussels. Uh, so um, that uh, is an important aspect. Obviously, it requires to ask more information to the initiatives. Is your initiative available on national level? Where do you give your trainings? Uh, before with Molengeek, it was simple, it was only Brussels, but now it's Charleroi and it's Antwerp, and we are starting in Ostende in the, in the coming months. So the regional aspect uh, is being added also uh, at this moment in time. Is it already giving 100% of what is available in Belgium? Obviously not. Is it growing? Yes. And I'm trying to monitor it to see if I have enough in every skill or competences we need. Uh, remember, we be the change. We make the study, what are the competences we need today? What are the competences we need going forward? And do I have enough offers for training to answer to that requirement? If I do not have enough offer to, or I need to look a little bit further to see if somebody has it, or maybe that could be a good reason to invest in that one or reuse something which is already uh, being done in, um, in, in Europe. So now how can you uh, help and what is the, what is the future? And um, it's, it's a never ending story. Eh? So if you thought that you would have your answer on how can I find the right talent today? My answer is nyang. There is a lot available, but we need to change our culture. And I know by experience, being managing different companies and teams, changing a culture in an organization takes three to five years. But I, the good news is I started with this team in 2011, 2012. So I have already a little bit on advance um, uh, on, on solving the problem. But the only aspect we are missing is firstly, it's not a priority, the highest on the agenda, not in organizations, not in the government, not in the education, not in the industry. So every support to get it higher on the agenda because that's the only one how we can really make impact. We need to focus going forward on seven points, six which I will comment. And the seventh is we need to regroup the ecosystem in one ecosystem. Because the day that I would stop with this on top of passion, it's a little bit like um, taking out a cake too early of the oven and then it will, it will die in silence. And so the only thing what I would like to do, my dream is that at least I can regroup the whole ecosystem, remember all stars, because digital is doing community management. Be digital together is doing community management. Digital skills is doing, this is not really very efficient. Be the change is the kernel of the data going forward. So making one organization not governmental led because we want to continue it over time and adding some aspects. And the aspects I will comment is first, it's a changing world. So don't talk about digital skills, talk about future skills. Don't talk about only about technology competences we need in cyber. One quadrant is the human aspect. In digital, gezond boerenverstand is the most important digital competence. Um, collaborating together cross silo is the second most digital competent, competence which is required. It's nothing to do with technology. So it is, we need to continue to monitor what are the competences we need today, but not less important, what will be the competences we need for the future? The second part is, where is the gap? What do we have on DigiSkills Belgium? And on what aspects don't we have enough inspiring initiatives? Don't we have enough focus on the inclusivity? 
don't we have super quantum, super sci cyber NIS to uh, uh, certification training? And for those aspects, maybe we need to put a focus on uh, investing in them. And the third aspect is la répétition fixe la notion. If we need to continue to convince all stakeholders that it should be part of the agenda of the government going forward. Um, in 2014, when Alexander was uh, nominated as uh, Minister of Digital, I had, the first thing I did was organize a meeting with Nelly Cruz and him. And I said, do me a favor, don't ask a big force to do a big analysis on what should be your four priorities. Alexander, I can already tell them. You need to work about cyber, but not only cyber, but also ethical behavior, fake news, safety on the internet for kids. You need to work about the infrastructure. You need to know that Belgium is the only country with the whole 4G network is based on Chinese infrastructure. Now, if you have talked about cyber, you can imagine something. So that's why I've worked a lot on getting a 5G toolkit in the European countries, making the recommendation that maybe if I call you and the Chinese listen, that's not too bad. But if you connect self-driving cars and nuclear centrals and you do remote surgery, then maybe it could be better not having somebody giving the opportunity to say, now I turn the button. So there is some aspects on the infrastructure which are important. Um, digital economy, it was the discussion about should we tax robots? Because robots are bad. They're taking away the jobs of people. May I remember you? We have already more than 700,000 open vacancies. So the more robots we can place, the more physically bodies we can free up. If we retrain them, then we can close vacancies. So do not stop any project on automation. Do not stop any project on using technology to improve the efficiency. It is not bad for the human being. It's even better for the human being because we will use the human being for what the human being is good and not what technology can do. And then the fifth part was, the fourth part was um, uh, digital government, not the digitalization of the government, but what should be the role of the government in a connected world? We still have something to do on that level locally, but I will take Spain as an example. Um, Spain was much um, in, in the DAISY barometer, which is used by, by Europe to compare member states. Um, Belgium was in front of Spain a few years ago. But what happened in Spain is not easy. Eh? They also have different uh, uh, continents, uh, different um, regions, let's call it that way. So in complexity, you could say, maybe it's a little bit like Belgium. But they sit, they sat together, they made one strategy, digital transformation of Spain, and guess what? They executed it. And now we've just switched places. Spain is in front of Belgium because we're still working on silos and we're using a lot of plan de relance to automate activities, which is good. Eh? Remember, I said we need to automate to free up physically bodies eh, that we can use afterwards. But if you only continue to automate in silos and you're still not thinking to work transversal, yeah, then you're still doing what you're doing yesterday and we are not making ourselves more ready for tomorrow. And then the last point was um, digital skills and jobs, which I've uh, taken as a theme today. So we need to continue to work on the stakeholders. And the stakeholder is, you know, when I point to somebody else, there are three fingers, oops, three fingers pointing to myself. And it's easy to say, yeah, but it's the problem of the government or the problem of the education or the problem. Let's first solve what we already can solve. And that's why I have a lot of um, people with a lot of passion and energy who say, okay, let's not wait. Let's just do some pieces of the puzzle, bring them together and from the bottom up, make a reality which is different. Let's not wait. Let's, that's the title of my last book, by the way. Let's now dare for tomorrow there to take an initiative that for tomorrow will have a positive impact on the society for our kids and our uh, grandchildren. Um, yes, we need to work on the content. Um, and on the content, there is, there is, there is an aspect of um, all aspects. Eh? We need to be inclusive. We need to have them free of charge. We need to have the basic level, the expert level, and, and the world is constantly evolving. And what do we do with, we are a lot investing in offshore, 
uh, in Belgium, which is great economy uh, advantage, but we need people with having the right competences. So it's nice to say we will have Reine Elizabeth offshore, but if we do not have people managing that technology, then we only create a bigger, a bigger gap in the execution. So it is evolving, so we need to constantly screen and also constantly adapt the content to uh, what is needed at that moment. Um, the fifth one is, is, is a very important one, a very difficult one to find, um, and that is creating awareness to the citizen. Um, I've made an analysis of the total fund of the Plan de Relance at European level, at federal level, and at regional level. And the budget foreseen for creating awareness is at each level exactly the same. It's zero. And I can't do more than in insist on the fact that if we cannot sensibilize the citizen, the mothers of the children, the children themselves, the people working, the people not working, the younger people, the older people, the, the foreigners, whatever the culture may be, we will never succeed in solving the problem. We will never have vacancies filled in just popping out of the sky. And I do know that awareness campaigns is seen as a marketing budget and as a cost. This is one of the critical elements of success. Now we have some campaigns, but it's one day and then it dies. And then it's the second day and then it dies. It's not, I've, 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 the ecosystem, we had a huge work on getting more than 6 million and a half people on its me during COVID. I've never seen that much CPIS, uh, OCMWs, NGOs helping people on how to install It's Me. Now let's hope that we can keep It's Me as a platform, but we need to get them involved. We can't keep our post offices open for the rest of our life. Yes, we need to manage the transition. My first slide was, I'm trying to do it with an inclusive focus, but it, it should be a transition period. So we need to communicate, recommunicate, and that's a very important aspect. And then the last one is, is meten is weten. If you do not measure in any comparison with any people in the room or at home, but sometimes when I do a presentation for the sector, eh, the uniform in the room is a blue suit and brown shoes. So like, thanks you for bringing some color here. No, it's not brown shoes, it's black shoes, so it's okay. Um, but, but we need to change the requirements on the hiring. We need, need Stop hiring people having all competences, but hiring competences which are needed to execute the vision for the organization. And that's a completely different way of seeing the, um, the evolution of the employment market. And that's the only way to get people motivated to continue to work. And I will give you just two examples. We have a great university for gaming in Kortrijk, and we have a great one in Louvain-la-Neuve. Reputated international, fantastic. You know the reality? So now we have students who want to work in the gaming sector, but we don't have a gaming sector. But we have an industry who needs to transform and need to make learning platforms. So maybe if we could tell them upfront that they will be the competences that we need in the industry, to help, the man, to help the manage the transformational skilling, upskilling by the most cool and sexy aspects and tools and gamification of that aspect, then they would be motivated. So we need to adapt also our way on setting the expectations in line with what the market, the industry, the society needs. Firstly, and secondly, we need to monitor. We only monitor the number of students that follow the radical education. That's what Europe requires. DAISY is only that one. So remember I said, we still do not have the right curriculum. We do not have the right profs. We do not have the right students. So we can only go down. And every year when there is an update, then government calls me, Saskia, you're doing a lousy job. Yeah, I'm doing a lousy job. Yeah, doing a lousy job. It will not improve. We will only go down. So we need to start monitoring also 
the outcome of all the non-regulator education initiatives, which we are not doing. How many people is BCODE training? How many people started working in a technology role? How many women do we transfer from a job to another job having the right competences? How many people do we, did we train in, 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 in cyber, starting from maybe having a job in marketing or uh, a master in history or whatever, reskilling, upskilling? So we need to find a way on getting those facts on the table. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to convince the ones who are still not convinced, but also to measure how impactful can we be towards the market, which is not going to be an easy challenge, but I'm pretty sure that AI will be certainly of help in this one. And then the last one is we need to give a kind of a stamp. Um, I had um, a discussion with the, with the company of Wallonia saying I need coders. Is it, yeah, you, you need to be coded in Charleroi. Yeah, but I don't want to be coded. I want to have a master's. So we need to give a kind of a light certification. I'm not going to sit in months and years in meeting, discussing what should be in the curriculum and how do, no, we need a kind of a large light certification, just saying that BCODE has done that and that and that and that. And we need to realize that we need to hire and reskill in the organizations anyhow. So it's not a diploma anymore. It should be a basic set of skills that you hire because it's in line with the future of your organization and that you reskill to get them adapted to the reality. But I do understand that somewhere a light certification uh, is an essential one. Um, there is an announcement done for an initiative which is done in France, which is called PIX, which um, La Région Bruxelles Wallonie is using for the functionaries. Um, it's an assessment, like we have the digital skills passport or, uh, or become digital. But there is a small difference. In France, they all speak French, firstly. Secondly, it's implemented in all secondary schools in France. So it is already used as a kind of a reference for the industry to hire. You take your PICS assessment, green, orange, red, and uh, we can skill, uh, upskill them. If you want to roll it out for all Belgium, which could make sense, yeah, then we need to translate it. We need to adapt the use cases. We need to, we need to, we need to, uh, and we need maybe also to implement an education system. So we need to find a way to solve that problem um, for the individual, that at least it is valorized what they are doing on skilling, reskilling, but also for uh, the organization. So that's why a kind of a batch system, certification system, whatever, uh, token system, whatever uh, is important. So just a few ideas on uh, what I think you, you can do today to create the right talents. Thank you. And I will take your questions because you already have one. And if you have any questions at home, do not hesitate. There are very kind people reading the chat, so uh, I will take them with pleasure. Go ahead, on the mic. Yeah, I'm coming in from the EU, uh, from the DG of Education, and we have um, yeah, pro pro programs like uh, the ESCO qualification, yeah. for example, and also uh, the European Batch Alliance yeah. with e-batches. Is that yeah. not something that... So that is on the platform of DigiConnect, by the way. Eh? So we, 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 we try to regroup them, them uh, everywhere. Um, it is available if people look for any batching. I'm not, I'm not making a judgment if one is good or not good. The only thing I'm saying is we need to have one and preferable one. Now, um, uh, depends a little bit on the, on the focus group. If you talk for batching high-level certification, it can be okay. But if I'm talking about use of, use of is me, then it's a little bit a bit too far. And we need to 
find a solution for both spectrum. But I'm 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 participating to the to the discussion groups on on the certification aspect we need to solve in um, in Europe. Eh? So the more we can do for every member state the same thing, it's okay. The only attention points, the stakeholders group are very vast, um, and that is sometimes creating a little bit of difficulty. Or just pay attention on that one. That was my only. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Saskia. I loved your presentation. I loved your totally honesty. Uh, uh, very Dutch. I'm Dutch originally. And my question is, so I worked in NATO for 20 years in a multinational environment, and I have now my own consultancy in Belgium. And what I found is that when we look at for upskilling and reskilling, we need a growth mindset. So be the change. Change happens to us, but transition disruption happens within people, especially when you have a diverse, generationally diverse workforce with up mm. to five different generations. It's a very uncomfortable process and which is still seen stigmatized a bit because emotions in the workplace, it's kind of uh, seen as psychology or therapy material, while in essence, it's critical for developing a growth mindset and getting people not to change personalities, but to change beha behaviors. How do we get people to do things differently in the job, especially when it comes to critical thinking? So I would love to have your view on this, on how do you see that evolve in, in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium? Because when we create the culture, this the emotional intelligence aspect, you know, to changing behaviors, mm -hmm. learning new habits is already difficult, but unlearning new habits mm -hmm. is even more difficult. And there is an internal aspect to it. And companies can no longer turn away and say, ah, oh, this is an individual responsibility. It should be, at least my opinion, corporate responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and now I'll talk as a as an ex-CEO. Um, it's the only way of making your you're making your business results, in my opinion. But you know, I thought that people making a career in the past was you have a diploma, then you are promoted, you've got five people, one floor, second floor, fifth floor, and at a certain moment, you have the top floor, two cars, two assistants, eh, until you're 67, and then you're going to enjoy life. Now we are living in a world which is completely different. And my biggest worry um, after COVID is that we still have the same people with the same blue suits and the same brown shoes sitting on the same seat, discussing that everybody needs to come five days to the office again. Why? Because their way of seeing people management was I put everybody in an office from nine to five, and then I did my job. And my biggest warning was, please have a look on who is people manager. Because now you need to inspire somebody who is not in the office who is maybe at home, who is maybe in Marseille or wherever it can be. So it requires a completely different skill. And as long as you do not change at that level, the skill in your organization, you will never be capable of changing the culture in the organization. So that's the first point. But I'm having hope um, because I'm also an, an independent board member in a lot of organizations. And before the boards and still in a few uh, companies, the boards were just doing one thing, sitting in meetings and asking for the dividends, financial results, short term. Now they have something which is called EU taxonomy. Okay, now it's coming for the green parts. Yeah, the first, uh, how can you reduce CO2, et etc. et cetera. But the next part on the taxonomy for non-financials is the social part. So now a board member is resp responsible to verify if we do the necessarily investments in skilling, reskilling, and upskilling, in, in, in changing, in the well being, now I'm going to be very impatient. But how are they going to report? So they look to HR. HR is, oh, I don't know. They look to IT. IT is, oh, I don't know. And the board is still saying it will not go that fast. So that I think will change the paradigm because they are measured, obliged to measure the financial results of organizations, not only on the, no, the performance of the organization, not only on financial results, but also on non-financials as well on the planet as on the social, uh, on the social part. And the last part is it takes three to five years. And I've tried to do it myself in different organizations. 
try to do it in a month. Try to do it in a quarter because I'm come from a lot of quarter oriented US driven companies, doesn't fly. Try to do it in a calendar year, doesn't work. And why does it take three to five years? Because you have to change the hard disk of every individual. You, you do not need to change the organization, you need to change every individual. And remember, I said only 7%, the best results that I can find made, made studies made in Belgium, Belgian organizations with the Belgian culture is 7%. And the last point, we have a lot of different cultures in Belgium. We even do have Dutch people. Eh? Um, Dutch, eh? Dutch, not Flemish, Dutch. Eh? We all speak different. We all think different. We, 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 we see the problem, the challenge, the opportunity from a different, so there is nothing as one size fits all. And that makes it even more difficult because HR is, I love HR, but most of them are focusing on HR operations, fleet management, holiday planning and payroll. Very important, but that's not what I mean by HR. We need to work on how can I create or if it is within different generations. Yeah? I've, my, my book, my first book was about uh, how can I work, let work the five generations, the four generations in, in synergy together or the different cultures and a project of HR, the fish of the month. Now we're gonna work on well-being. But well-being, I mean, I've got people who say, I do not want to come to the office. And you've got people who say, I would like to come to the office because I'm fed up in sitting alone in my apartment. We need to adapt the access to the buildings based on the content of the meeting, not on the number of days of the person. So it, 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 it will take three to five years. Yeah, but that, that, that should be the leaders of tomorrow. Sorry, if you do not, if you're not capable, what is the job of somebody leading an organization? And I'm not born as a CEO, eh? I've, I've been there, but it's the same for your life. You are CEO of your own life. So need, you need to be patient to take responsibility for yourself and yeah, do something to be relevant over time and be happy because I do not believe that there is a next life. So we better enjoy this life. A last question? A short question. Because I see the big boss is coming, so uh, I need to end up. Uh... Just a, Go ahead. A short question. Do you think that it would be most efficient to start working with the HR teams in understanding how to hire, who to hire, and how to motivate? I will repeat the question. Uh, do you, don't you think it's better to work with HR people? Um, it's end, end, end. Yes, we need to say to HR, your job will change. A payroll, fleet management, and holiday planning will be automated. Remember the 80, 20? So now you spend 80% of your time and 20%. Now tomorrow it will be, that will be 20% and you have 80% free. So retrain yourself to be, read, to be ready to tackle those aspects. But it means that you need to learn what the business is. I've always had the same discussion, business to IT alignment and business to HR alignment. Why is HR not in the management team, but reporting to finance and those kind of things? So it's, it requires also a learning project for the HR people. And I must admit that I'm already shouting that for years. I've, I've, I've tried to do that in the organizations where I was responsibility, but I, I think I could be the good link between HR and, and, and the business. But I now I have to realize that for the Agoria members, which are most likely companies managing manufacturing or, or IT, I said, now I'm going to start a working group on the employment market, but with the CEOs and a young professional. Young professional, why? Because I want to have the dynamic afterwards in the organization. And the CEO, why? Because if the CEO doesn't decide what should be the competences that I need for my organization, how the heck can HR start doing their job? So it, it should be a teamwork, but the role of HR will drastically change. A last one. I'm almost 60 and I passed uh, the PIX certification almost two, two years ago. And I'm a partisan of the training in my whole life. But the gap with the top management when yeah. you have this kind of behavior yeah. is 
bigger and bigger and bigger, and they don't understand me anymore. Then usually I've been fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, um, sadly to hear, but um, uh, it, it is a, it's a good example of the reality. And I would only say, don't give up. Because I've, my first job was painting the showroom, like I said, when I started in IT. Eh? And, 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 and then at a certain moment, I started working when we still had no mobile phones, no internet, no fax. Eh? You remember when the animals were AI? wasn't existing or we didn't knew. Eh? And we were still arguing if everybody would have a PC. So a while ago. Um, and I started in IT as a woman, not an engineer. So how lousy can you be? But something helped me, I think. Um, I was born, no, I'm born in a family of six and I've got five brothers. And I've learned... <laughs> No, no, not for me, for them. Eh? And I learned how people can think. I'm not saying men, because Thatcher was a woman. You could argue about her female skills. And I have a lot of great men with a lot of female skills. So it's not black and white eh, in that sense. But I've learned that going against them was not a good idea. You should go around. You should go above. You should go below. You should be capable of saying... Just, an, oh, that was a great idea that you had. Finally, it was the idea which I gave. Eh? But if the result is there, they are happy and you can progress. And so that's why I say don't give up, but you will have a lot of blue suits and brown shoes, which are having feet in the sand and, and holding any change yeah. to happen. But it's exhausting, right? It is exhausting, but but think about me. I'm 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 exhausted from time to time. And then I meet some people and say, no, you need to continue. It is the only way that I can say to my children and grandchildren, maybe I didn't do a lot, but I treat I tried. One question one question online. One question online. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a very good question. And the answer is we didn't get funding to do that at all. So it is funded. It is funded until now by uh, DigiConnect, um, and I say until now because you remember the three steps. You have to make a study. You have to create something. And now I try to avoid that it dies in silence. Um, but the, the slides that I've shown with uh, six activities, these are the activities which I try to now individually um, stabilize that at least it can continue. Firstly, secondly, I had a meeting with Dermine and I have a meeting with Dermine um, to ask if there is not some remaining uh, recovery fund budget available uh, to get access to um, on or scalability or awareness creation um, uh, about the subject. Have a great day and a great future. <laughs>